All right, time to do a Bellator 62 video. I know, I don't generally do Bellator videos. The lighting is terrible as well. But I've seen, you know, the one video done on it was terrible. And I feel the need that if there's going to be one out there, Lord help me, it should at least tell you something about the main card. I'm not going to say whose video I'm talking about. Undercard, though. Not a lot to talk about. A lot of guys who are really up and comers, not really there yet, really. But there's one fight I do wish to discuss, and that is Jacob Kerwan versus Dave Jansen. Jacob Kerwan, of course, recently, semi recently, was making a bit of a name for himself with the victory over Renan Azare, who's competing in the Bellator Lightweight Tournament. Which, there's a complaint I have about the tournament. What the fuck is Renan Nazare doing in there? He lost to Kerwan, who's on the undercard. Didn't really make all sense. Going with Jansen, Kerwan is really just a wrestler who doesn't really have a lot of other skills. Jansen's wrestling is pretty damn good. I see him being able to put Kerwan on his back or standing and banging with him and not striking him on the feet. I think he's a better grappler. I think he's a better striker, and I think the wrestling favors him as well. So all in all, I gotta go with Jake Kerr or I gotta go with Dave Jansen. He's not a tremendous, tremendous finisher against top-notch talent. And well, I'm not gonna say that. Jacob Kerwan is exceptionally, exceptionally top-notch because he's not really that top-notch. I mean, he's got 10 submissions. Someone's going to say, oh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, no, no. no. He has not submitted anyone good. That's the key. <laughs> so I'm going to go with a decision for him against Jacob Kerwan, who... Uh, Honestly, it would be one of the better wins he's ever had. I mean, Kerwan has been submitted before by Jimmy Hedis and by David Sachs. Both of those are guys who I think are more... The word I'm going to use is fitness submission guys than Jansen, who's more... Sorry, my hair's a little weird. Is more... Not, not necessarily brute strength, but more of a, a wrestler submission guy. You know, he uses wrestler holds that can be accomplished with the proper application of force versus technique. That's where I'm going with that. On the main card, aka the tournament bros, JJ Ambrosi versus Brett Weeman. Brett Weeman, very good wrestler, coming down to 185, 155 for the first time. That's really my only concern with this fight. Um, Ambrosi, you know, he is good. He's a good grappler, but guy, when you put him on his back, sometimes he just. He doesn't really seem to shine when you put pressure on him, and Weedman will do that. Weedman decision. Excuse me, he doesn't look god awful cardio wise. Uh, Rene Nazare versus Michael Thierry, Pereira Silva. That's a mouthful. Michael, up and coming star. That's what we call him, uh, name wise, anyways, because I'm not saying that whole thing yet. Nazare was an up-and-coming star until getting completely derailed by Jacob Kerwan. The question, as far as this goes, is, you know, Nazare, he does have considerably good BJJ. He's got power, although not the most uh, technical stand-up in the world. He <clears throat> possesses pretty decent wrestling for a BJJ guy, but it was laughable against Kerwan. So the question is, does Thiago Michael, a huge up-and-coming prospect who does have a pair of submission losses, stack up tremendously well against Nazareth? I'm hoping he does because him moving on in the tournament I think is more interesting than Nazareth doing it. Because I think if Nazareth moves on, he's just going to get it. I mean, you look at the wrestlers in this that are in a nutshell better than Girl One. you got Brett Weedman, you got Rick Hahn, who's, I know, a, a, a judo guy technically. But still, you've got Cupcake Woodard. All of these guys who will basically just be able to take him down and, and completely control him if Jacob Kerwan could do it. That being said, I am taking him, Renan Nazare, second round submission against Thiago Michael. Moving on to Rick Hahn versus Ricardo Torloni. Ricardo Torloni, a guy I'm, I'm, quite ha I'm quite high on, but. Rick Hahn is a guy who could definitely win this tournament. Rick Hahn's coming down from 170, where he was very competitive, to 155. His judo is fantastic. His stand-up is coming along. His grappling is, is is better than people generally, I think, think it is. And as a result, even though I think Terloni 
you know, he's definitely a guy who can do some things. Very well-rounded guy. Uh, good Muay Thai, good BJJ. I don't foresee him being able to match up with Rick Hahn in a favorable way in this fight. So I gotta go with Rick Hahn, probably unanimous decision. Next up, what I personally think was gonna be the front when they announced who was in this tournament, I thought this would be the final. Lord Woodard, Pitbull Ferrari. Lord Woodard, excellent wrestler, excellent athlete. All those good, good, good things, you know, lost to Michael Chandler in the last tournament, which we're, we're seeing is absolutely no shame. Patricia Ferrari also lost to Michael Chandler in the finals. Amazing Muay Thai. Very good on the ground. Wrestling's a tad bit suspect. Therein lies the problem. You have a very good wrestler in Cupcake Woodard. You have a wrestler, or you have a, a, a kickboxer with grappling skills, but who has perhaps deficient wrestling in Pitbull Patricia Ferrari. This makes the pick very hard because I want to pick Ferrari. He's the guy I want to win this tournament because he's exciting and I want to see him versus Chandler again. I don't necessarily want to see Cupcake Woodard versus Chandler again. And I think the winner of this fight has a, has a very, very good chance of winning the tournament. I think there's, you know, Rick Hahn's an option. Brett Weedman could get in the mix maybe. Nazare being my kind of Final Four, whoever gets this guy, kill him. Um... I'm going back and forth, honey. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The problem I I am having with this is if Patricky can stop the takedown, he can win this fight. And periodically he has done that. He showed very well against Kurt Pellegrino, but Kurt Pellegrino is a little bit washed up at this point. He showed very well against Toby Amada. He showed very well against Razor Rob when Razor Rob tried to take down. None of these are great wrestlers, though. Then you go back to his fight with like Willemie Ferrari in 2007, who's also not a very good wrestler, and he took him down at will, um, at points. As a result, I have a hard time thinking that he can keep Lloyd Cupcake Porter from taking him down. Now I'm going with Cupcake, the unanimous decision, will heavily be cheering for Pitbull. Up. And the main event, heavyweight tournament final, put off to this event because Eric Prindle got sick. Of course, was supposed to settle, but then we have the famous shoot kick into the balls of Prendel from Tiago Big Monster Santos. Which leads me to what do I think is going to happen this time. I picked Santos last time. I'm going to pick Santos again. Because up until the ball shot, Santos was working Prendel like it was his job. Which it is. Santos, second round TKO. Looking a lot like it did before. I mean, he's, he's just too big, too strong for a somewhat older Prendel. Uh, how old is Prindle? Is, you figured they would actually give you an age on this thing, but they don't. So I'm going to have to resort to the wonderful world that is Sherdog. Yeah, 35, so he's considerably older. Admittedly, you know, seven fight winning streak coming into that fight. Hasn't lost in eight fights, technically. Lost to Jimmy Ambrose, who's huge. We don't know who that is um, in his debut. He's got good boxing, but the problem is his power didn't seem to remotely phase Tiago Santos, and his speed didn't seem to phase Tiago Santos. Tiago Santos, second round TKO, getting those big mitts on, getting on top, boom, 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 putting him down. My predictions, enjoy the card, because free MMA is good MMA, sort of.